place the draft or whatnot. So uh, you take a quick look right there at the rosters. Again, we know them by now, especially for both of these teams. They've been around for a while. Of course, Trafalgar joining complexity. And for those that may not, again, have been following somewhat, but Krebson did leave line after the Hunter Grand Finals. And uh, as a result of that, you got, of course, Skyzo initially stepping in to uh, to kind of replace and be that new fist. So we are in game number one, the Emperor. Yeah, I mean, I'm ready to go and break. Yeah, we are ready. <laughs> the teams are ready. Let's do it. Hopefully you guys are ready, too, because we are jumping in. This is it again. Game number one here, Complexity, taking a line eSports club. So as you can see, officially in the game, let me actually make sure my D&D &D is on. It was not. Good thing I checked before <laughs> I got those great whispers. It's okay. They're always so kind. I never even <laughs> touched mine. Ophelia, Parasite, Moon Queen, Keeper, the Four is coming out here as Blind Bands. Tempest, right. the first lock, Glacius, Torturer. See, I, I was going to say, I wasn't sure if, given the fact that Ophelia, Parasite, Moon Queen, and Keeper are ba uh, banned out there, Blind Band out, and then Tempest being locked, it tells me that Lions really does want that Tempest pick, and with those junglers banned out, that it becomes a really, really high priority as a jungler that can still yeah. have an aggressive edge and, and speed jungle and not really compromise your laning too much due to that adaptability. Uh, meanwhile, I was expecting Complexity to maybe lock up a very powerful combination on their side of heroes that they might like. Uh, make it a little bit predictable, but something like a, you know, Master of Arms plus uh, Rally, you know, or with Torp being in that pool as well would give them options. They could grab that devastating combination as well. But, you know, because that's what I look at when I see them like, okay, they want Tempest. We're going to get to a deadly combination of our own. Yeah. You know, so the fact that they didn't really do that, I, I would like to know a little bit more about what B Kid's overall plan was in this lock pool and how he's approaching it. Very versatile heroes across the board, though. Uh, seeing that Tundra locked up as well, which I wouldn't be surprised to see them draft up, especially given the nature of this lock pool. Uh, Torture would be the other uh, high priority pick that I see. Yeah. Yeah, Tundra locked up there again. He's definitely starting to make his appearance recently once again for, for good reasons. Uh, Moon Meander, a fantastic Tundra player, of course. Um, I'm sure Lion could also play him, though. So the possibility of him being picked up definitely there. But, yeah, you are right. It is interesting, you know, kind of getting the mindset there, as, as usual with drafters in general, especially these top-tier drafters such as B-Kid, uh, to kind of get an under, un, understanding. You see that Tempest first lock with the blind bands that we had. You know, uh, Glacius and Torch are great heroes. And on top of that, the Tundra, great heroes. But, you know, not those tier of heroes where you, you do see that rally, that master of arms that seem to just win you so many games. So, uh, going to pass up on that opportunity, though. The banning phase picking up here. Engineer, Rally, Master of Arms, Fade, and Infora. There's the Deadwood ban. And now the first pick going to be happening here shortly for Lion Esports Club. So you look on the board real quickly, see what is left open. you got your Bubbles, your Hag, of course. Um, those are definitely the first couple that are jumping out to me, at least, as far as the, the initial goes. Magmus, you know, a beacon especially, loves to play that Magmus. And... Wouldn't be surprised to even see it up in their hands. There's Pebbles on the board. Yeah, he, was, he was the major burst hero, and they were highlighting him for a while there, so I was pretty much expecting to see it. Pebbles is uh, never a bad choice. He's consistently been at the top of the scene for as long as I can remember. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. On, honestly, since the since the start of Han, he has never really died off as being like a premier hero pick. Yeah, he is definitely one of the more signature competitive heroes uh, when it's all said and done, if you kind of look back just over time. So, um, you know, he well, something like a Glacius. Yeah, speaking of heroes that are pretty good against Tundra, though, it's something like a Tundra, I mean, so good against Pebbles, is something yeah. like a Tundra that can really scout out those ganks and mitigate the effectiveness of his portal key. So, mm -hmm. expecting to potentially see that. Aluna, uh, let's take a look what else. They've been favoring a lot of Bubbles play lately. Yep. There you go. Um, we got it. On the ball. It's the same two picks <laughs> usually every single draft here. Yeah. Uh, not that it's a problem. They've been having really strong lanes, really flexible lanes. They can still pretty much go any direction they want right now. Yeah. That's the great thing about it. Yeah. Uh, of course, it is pretty indicative of the fact that they're probably going to be running that Aluna support, but it is stopping them, especially with the Engineer being banned out in Amphora. It stops them from grabbing that devastating Pebbles plus Aluna combination. And I, I do like Pebbles plus Aluna a lot more than the Pebbles Glacius and the mm -hmm. other Pebbles varieties simply because uh, of the assistance that you can add to his burst combo from any range. Throughout the game, yeah. Um, Lodestone on the board as well. Lodestone's definitely been a hero that we have been seeing mm -hmm. quite a bit and would not be surprised at all to see it here even, so... Super KG, again, the, the well, new uh, drafter in place right especially now. Especially with Tempest out there. He, yeah. You know, one thing I could be concerned about is maybe he might be a little bit too much of a liability if they're worrying about a Pebbles getting farmed. They have to have the load zone in the suicide lane. They have the Tempest. I mean, that still sounds like an extremely strong it point, does, though. Yeah. I mean, I... <laughs> uh, load, load zone is definitely jumping out, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say that. Yeah, again, something like the Hag, as always, and uh, or even a different Soul Reaper, you know, especially Lions actually has shown that they were like to run the Soul Reaper in the past. So 
Um, but usually Ophelia with an Ophelia and such, and Ophelia is banned out. So Wretched Hag, uh, you pointed out, could be okay. I'm looking at the lock bowl. They're pretty much guaranteed there. Uh, something like a, if you're looking at the counter response of Tundra plus Torture, perhaps, you're pretty much looking at maybe like, yeah, that Pyro or they're grabbing a support. Alonia, Alonia interesting. I'm actually not necessarily expecting to see Alonia. I think she's going to be played more of this uh, farmer style role. Mm -hmm. This game, not the support. Yeah, again, I, I would love to see that. I'm, I'm a fan of seeing a hero like that in that role because of just the burst potential that she can put out and how she can take over some games even in that mid to game stage especially. So Very powerful um, Tempest too. Uh, just an Alonia and Tempest up alone oh yeah. can pretty much just wipe the floor, man. <laughs> Absolute zero on top so of the Sometimes you're worried thing, about yeah. like how much AoE damage you're going to have during a Tempest. Sometimes nice he gets a great hole off. You're like, oh, they don't have enough damage. With an Alonia, <laughs> that's not going to be the case. Everyone will get shredded. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, right now, no matter what hero combination they, they wind up with, the, the, the common thing that screams out to me is magic damage, magic damage, magic damage, magic damage, and not so much in, in terms of uh, physical damage output. So as far, as far as itemization goes and uh, eventually looking at those shrunken heads, it gives a very uh, defined counter slash, um, I, I would say almost a timer to their lineup if they don't have, they have to have control of the game by a certain amount of time or else if it's sort of on even footing and they get those shrunken heads, uh, something like a pebble, uh, pandemonium, he definitely favors an itemization route like that as well. That could spell trouble. Yeah, that was a, he, right clicking the wretched hag that whole time, and it was definitely looking like it could be very, very p good possibility. Good but the pandemonium move. kind of switching it up there at the last second. But pandemonium again in general, definitely hero that we've been seeing more and more. And as you're stating, a, a great candidate for something like that shrunken oh, head uh, earlier on, and uh, he can definitely become a very hard hitter as we've seen so many times. The tempest first pick again, oh, no shocker for, there. Tundra. Yeah. Well, yeah, they could go for the tundra. They could just go for more just torture. I meant, or they could just go for more gank presence and the other support. Like, like, yeah, so. I was going to say, like, yeah, Tort is great. He's a very flexible one, but they're looking for more gig presence and just, yeah, it's easier to catch up and set up those combos in general. More lockdown with Iglesias. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I like that they have more guaranteed disable, I feel now. You know, uh, Torture is great. Torture is great, but it's a little bit more unstable, a little bit harder to deal with, and should provide a little bit stronger of a lane, especially here with looking at this Pandemonium, too. There you go. You see Torture is the final pick over their lion side, however. Uh, so they'll gladly take him, of course, uh, them, him and Pyromancer, I'm sure. Some options between those two heroes, perhaps, for that final final support to be played. But uh, it is going to be the torture route. Uh, you do see right there in chat, apparently, B could asking for a remake. Uh, something along the lines, I guess, Moon can't actually um, connect. Yeah, so. he said he had to restart his computer. Yes, now he can't yeah. connect. So, yeah, getting that remake. So, uh, yeah, I think just overall the Rome, if it potentially comes out from Glacius and Aluna, that is that is a lot stronger. That long range initiation from the Tundra Blast in the first place helps set up so many kills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see right there, they actually started off with only four players. Uh, so, gonna have a quick remake right here. Again, hopefully nothing too long, and we can jump into the game ASAP. So, it uh, gives us time to look at these new Chippendale alt avatars, however, on uh, from the store. So. <laughs> These things. I swear, again, I haven't actually checked for myself. We're actually bringing this up. Uh, this uh, this Legionnaire, there's no way. He doesn't look like this in game. There's no way. I just, I, I played a lot of Han, <laughs> and I, I, can't, I can't tell you that they look any different. I've got to say, those are, I'm not even going to say, well, <laughs> it's do, you hilarious my do you want my opinion on them? Yeah, they're hilarious, is what it is. I, uh, go ahead, call I mean, them that. Free, I but Party Zephyr, that's always cool seeing him. Party Zephyr's in. I like Party Zephyr. He, he's definitely rocking. But uh, something about the Chip and Dale, man, they, they just offend me. They just offend you. Yeah, they do. They do. And I think the one looked like Solstice when I was playing. And I was like, oh, it, that's a Legionnaire, huh? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. A little bit offended. <laughs> so, Sometimes the alts can be a little bit tying in with one another. A little and bit it can crazy. Be confusing. Yeah. But anyways, I'm getting distracted here. Um, all right, so back to the game. Let's see if... Uh, they are even back in the lobby. Looks like they are. Okay, they are even loading in. So here we go back in. Just going to wait on Moon Meander to load up. Always the first load causing the issues. Uh, but once he gets back in, again, it will be banning or uh, lockpick, but hopefully they'll be able to do it very quickly. And then we can get started here in game number one. So, uh, again, as far as the lineups are concerned, it, it, it does look like that Alonia is going to be playing more in that farming farming role here over here for Lion Esports Club. So, excited for that. And the, the, the team fight synergy, man. That is, yes, it's all about magic damage for the most part there on the Legion side. But uh, in that mid-game, before the Shrunken Heads, before, obviously, you'd expect Mystic, Vex, Mystic Vestments even. But, hey, if they get, get it together, there's a lot of possibilities here for Lion to get complete genocides in, in, in cases. So... Uh, complexity, no doubt, we'll have to we'll have to be worried about that, I'm sure. But they do have that that carry potential with uh, the pandemonium. 
taking into the late game, of course. So Yeah, I'm expecting to see them... Okay, so if I would say you look at this bubbles, and that's more than light. I mean, it depends how they want to lane. They could even do something like an aggressive laning assignment, given the fact that they have potential solos coming out from the bubbles, and the Wretched Dragon choose to go aggressive. Uh, using that Glacius, Aluna, and... Uh, and Pandemonium, you know, an aggressive tri lane of sorts there. They do have enough lockdown and damage to make it work, especially given the fact that they're going against something like a Tempest, maybe getting extra ward, sort of blocking out the, the jungle spawns, making sure they can't get ganked, and uh, trying to shut down the farm of the uh, safe lane. Yeah. Uh, no real heroes there that have uh, built in a lot of mobility. Something like Alonia or other souls like that would get punished heavily. Uh, not like you have a Wretched Hag or a Bubbles or a Keeper down there that's going to be really difficult to gank. So uh, potentially look for aggressive laning coming up from Complexity. Otherwise, there is the option of having something like a bubble suicide and, uh, you know, Tundra in the safe lane and having one of the two supports playing as a pooler and a standard dual lane in the middle and having that pooler sometimes roam to gank mid as a third party. Those are the two uh, most viable laning options, I'd say. Uh, meanwhile, for the, the Legion side, we are seeing those the Tempest in the woods. Uh, who is actually playing the Magnus in the end? Uh, it looks like Super KGE, unless they continue to swap. No. Uh, no, yeah, that wouldn't okay. make sense. Actually, okay, FedEx for okay. the Wind is yeah. actually... He's going to play the Alonia, it looks like. Okay, I've been seeing FedEx for the Wind play their jungler a lot. Maybe it's just a case he's a little bit more uh, comfortable on that Alonia mm -hmm. than Skyzo is and wanting to pick it up. They figured they can make it work. I mean, that is a lot of aggression. That is a lot of money. Like, it's the kind of uh, team that you see in a fight where they take down one hero, they get them into everyone's like trying to run, and they PK, chase him down, land another yeah. spell and spell combo, and all of a sudden yep. two or three heroes are dead. They take your tower, you're like, damn it, there's six chaos. The snowball potential is here. Big yeah. time for it's, uh, the Lion Esports Club. No pun intended with Alonia. Uh, all five of them going to group up immediately. And it actually does make me wonder. I mean, are we going to see a laning Tempest? Um... I mean, his items say perhaps. Yeah, no, his items <laughs> definitely are, are laning items. Yeah, that, so. that tells us more of why Skyzo's playing yeah. once again. So they aren't actually trying to run that. You know, they actually know that might be a little bit of a vulnerability. If mm -hmm. they chose to run the jungle, they're like, nope. Uh, we're definitely going to throw them a curveball and sort of meet them head on with the tri lane. Yeah. So that, uh, yeah, that definitely makes reason as to why uh, kind of switching things up there with Oh, the actually, goals. yeah, no, he has five mana potions. Looks at, like it is more of that. Once again, it's a suicide tempest. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And it's Skyzo playing it, who is they're their gonna, standard Skyzo. They're going to run into one another right here. The Water Side from Peter no Pan. Dan will spot them. Yeah, Magnus It's very short range at level one, but he still they might both. be able to get range. Okay, Panamon going to get caught here. Zalagmas coming out. In comes Alonio with her new damage. A chain reactions as well. Big hit dropping quickly. Tries to can him all the time. Not going to happen, though. Shell Surf coming out. We'll get the counter kill on Magnus. So it ends up being a one for one exchange. But Lion Esports Club does get the Bloodlust kill. Initially, over complexity. It looked like Beacon tried to run for a second there at the end, and it looked like if he just chose the cannonball right away, mm -hmm. he would have been able to get it off. And you see that a lot of times. You kill Pandemonium as he's coming to the area. His corpse like, still lands and stuns you. So I think they might have been able to get a little bit of extra damage out, but still, it was a one for one exchange. You can tell the footing is still pretty equal. Let's see where those kills actually went to. Pebbles. Pebbles, Pebbles. and that's the number one uh, you know, snowball hero that yep. you like to see coming out from the Legion side. Uh, these gold per minute charts are absolutely absurd right now. Flynn's Monster absolutely needs to settle down, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sticking over the game. Might as well CC for complexity, obviously. 2,000. I, I've never seen pedals. 1,800 gold per minute before. Flynn's Monster <laughs> is insane. Uh, no, but anyway, Breaky, tri lane versus tri lane. This is what we kind of yep. talked about wanting to see more. And uh, really interesting with these picks to, uh, you know, pretty effective tri lanes on both sides. I'm going to take a quick look and analyze which one I think will do a little bit better. Uh, Alonia is being <laughs> in this case. Uh, He's not being. Sorry. Sorry. Well, I was just going to see this is a counter warding going on here at the bottom lane. Both sides actually kind of warded the ward of sides here off to the jungle, so not having to do with that. But uh, uh, So, yeah, you were mentioning, though, Elodia being played as that secondary support here. Yeah, I definitely uh, I consider the Hellborn tri lane to be stronger right now. I think Panda is great against melees if he's level 2, has that flick cannonball against something like a Pebbles. And just overall, Glacius and Lunar are a little bit more effective earlier than this Tor plus... Uh, <laughs> Alonia combination, especially with that many heroes. I mean, Torts and Palemon's not going to be able to do as much damage as he would like. I, yeah. I do favor the Hellborn tri lane, at least initially. Once Alonia gets a little bit more levels, can provide that some sustained lockdown and such. Maybe it'll change. And I actually like Pebble's item build a lot here. He has a quick mana battery due to the uh, yep. Bloodless kill he got. And I think, if anything, that might be one of the assisting factors in uh, tilting the lane maybe a little bit back more towards Lions. Yeah, that's a uh, huge, huge, huge in tri lanes, especially, of course. Fast uh, mana battery reasons, yeah. yeah.
So uh, definitely expecting exciting plays here at the bottom lane, though. I mean, you, you look at kill potential, it's it stands out quite a bit down here at the bottom side. So again, what we see might, might take a couple levels here. Holy crap, look at the middle lane in the meantime. That is a new Tundra skin. I have not seen this one. It definitely caught me off guard right there. So Isn't that just Odin? Just Odin? I, I yeah, don't know. Is it? I've never seen it. I'm pretty, yeah, no, I'm pretty sure that's Odin. Uh, he uh, has all sorts the, of... All the, yeah, the legs on the horses. He has like eight of them. Yeah. Crazy stuff right there. It's a scary... He's got two weapons, yeah. a hammer, There's hammer. a lot of references, I think, to Norse mythology uh, yeah. as he summons his pets. And gotcha. Gotcha. Such, so... Uh, but yeah, he's going up against Magnus here in the 1v1. You got 7-3 Magnus, a 5-0 Tundra currently. Tundra being played by Moonbeander in that middle lane, by the way. So again, we mentioned he's, uh, he's a favorite hero of his, even. Um, he plays it very well. It's definitely where he even made the debut on the competitive scene and <laughs> did very well. Uh, Tralfador is playing the Bubbles, though, also worth mentioning in that short lane up here. Mm -hmm. Matched up against uh, Sky Zone Tempest. Yeah, in general, Tralfa, uh, whenever you see him place, you're not going to see him in that suicide role. You're going to see him more as a primary priority farm slash impact hero mm -hmm. uh, for the team, making uh, yeah, a little bit, just in general, more of the farm tends to go to him in these lineups. So letting him carry a little bit. Uh, probably not expecting to see something. I'm not really expecting to see. I don't think the, the, the sort of Grimmar Bubbles route that we saw Slix play that one game, but. Yeah. Definitely uh, potential if uh, Pandemonium needs a little bit of help carry. All right, let's get it on. Yeah, oh, I just yeah. think we'll something see. like ultimately. I mean, technically, if he had something like Grimmar Shrunken Head, that would do very, very well against this Legion team. Uh, or Hellflower Shrunken, Sheep Shrunk, whatever he wants to go. But. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Again, it, it could be a simply a game decision where if your Pandemonium isn't getting the farm that you were hoping for earlier on, then maybe he will try to play more of that. Uh, that I need to go to Grim War, you know, to have more of a damage impact early on in the game and eventually into the late game stage. So we'll see. We'll see where Trough goes. I mean, he is having a fantastic start so far. 12 and 5 compared to a 4 and 3 Tempest. So, um, I, I mean, would you give a Bubbles that advantage in that matchup, anyways? Versus against the Tempest? Tempest? Yeah. I think it's pretty easy for him to cancel out the amount of potions. And well, I didn't get to see the exact items Trough started with. If I see it, a very quick ring of the teacher here. I know Tempest showed up a little bit late to the lane because I was a little bit too focused on bottom there, but he did get yeah. the bubbles. Did get the kill as well. Oh, he so did get the kills. So yeah, that gave him that really quick ring yeah. of the teacher, and given that, yeah, it allowed him to play a lot more aggressive on him. Mono potions are very difficult to get off with Tempest here. You see there, he's already burned through four out of his five, and uh, yeah, Tempest is not having the best of times. Strafe is really playing aggressive, trying to prevent yeah. from any sort of control with these elementals. He's like, hey, if they're down, I, I know I've got this. Yeah. Uh, curious to see if I'll see him pick up a bottle earlier on for. <laughs> bit more lane control and presence. Nothing yet, and his gold is still on. Courier's not back to base yet, though. Uh, Trilene versus Trilene. I'm going to take a look at B-Kid versus Pebbles here, though. Uh, Pebbles, you can tell that early Bloodless kill is actually doing him wonders, man. 14-7 plus Bloodless versus B-Kid, 6-1. So he's actually really, really afraid right now uh, of this Pebbles, and he's allowing him to have pretty much total creep dominance. Which yeah. A lot of range. To, I mean, he's using the hatch at pretty much every cooldown to snap out any creep kills he can get, but... You're right. I mean, the, the the danger factor is in favor of Light Esports Club. I mean, you mentioned as the levels start adding up, the Lions definitely has a uh, very strong trial in themselves. So, um, and we are getting to that point. You got a 3 2 2 so far compared to the 3 2 2 over here on the Hellborn side right now. So, um, the, lane, the lane positioning, I mean, it is pushed up a little bit, but still it seems to be where Lion uh, Flensmeister is able to get still uh, a very good a very good amount of farm himself. Glacius to go to the bottom rune and end up being the refreshment rune, it looks like. The top rune was picked up, by, or maybe it was a regen rune, actually, that he just picked up. And, yeah, because the refreshment room looks like it's actually picked up from Magnus. Anyways, uh, back to the bottom lane. Slime, that's right there. Auto, Luna, it's Glacial Spikes coming in as well. Luna's dropping quickly. Cool. Tundra's Return coming in, combo. Breaky. Tempest is running in, or Tundra's running in from the side, actually. And you see the chase is now on. Torture coming in. Alonia is going to be gone on with the charge. One more auto attack. The hasted Tundra doing work right there. Oh, man. And Moviander gets a double tap. He actually had his ultimate up, too, but, you know, Pebbles did have a full mana battery. I was wondering if we were going to see a little bit uh, more of an extension, but yeah, I think he knew that he was a little bit too far back. Didn't really want to burn the Aldi on something like that, although it might have been tempting. Uh, Tundra, man, you see right there the power of that uh, that cold shoulder and why it's essential yeah. to get a point to it. Because when you throw those axes, it doesn't matter what direction they're being sent in. If you get a cold shoulder on the target as they come back to you, there's a little bit of an AoE. They sort of hit in front of you. And this is so powerful. Um, yeah. That's a good time. And now the kill did happen first for Lion Esports Club. So again, a little bit of a positive there for them in the that situation, but complexity uh, coming out on top of the fight for sure. 
Yeah. Uh, with a double tap from Umeander, and he's, he was already having a very good time in the middle lane, and just even better. Now, Magnus is also having a pretty damn good time. He was the, the victim early on for Lion Esports Club, but it doesn't seem like it's been phasing him too much. You see right here kind of running up in position. Super KG getting very ballsy right here. I, he had to have disconnected. Yeah. There's no way. Super KG That didn't make not. any sense. No, no, no. He lagged out, his mouse died, something like that. He's even seen Moons like, I, yeah. did I miss something? I mean, were you trying to set something up or? Yep, not yeah. enough. That doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. doesn't happen. That's ever. unfortunate. That's really unfortunate because <laughs> that, that is uh Yeah, he a just gave Tundra an easy impact kill. on the game. I mean, it's, yeah, What the, the last thing Moon is, I mean, he's probably suspecting maybe they're setting up a gank on me. I'm trying to counter this real quickly. So you can't obviously play Moon in that case. Well, and no, so no, no, you don't. It's part of the game, dude. If yeah. the guy disconnects, you're, you're playing your matchup. No matter what sometimes you're playing your match, you can't be like, oh, I'm not going to go on him because he's doing something weird. You know, it could be bait. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's just that? that's just tech technology getting in the way, unfortunately. Well, why, why it hurt so bad is because of the fact that well, Magnus just sort of retreated and came right back to the lane. I mm -hmm. uh, was ready to fight him again, and then now he's gonna be sent back. I'm not even sure. I think he, I think he came, went back to base and then ported in, right? Uh, maybe I believe so. Yeah, 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 I'm pretty sure. So I'm not even sure if we'll be able to port from here. Well, uh, Tundra's gonna be hitting level seven, maybe even level eight over this uh, <laughs> uh, level six Magnus, and this is. It was just. It was. It was. It's fun. It, I mean, I hate to say funny because it really wasn't funny in the end, but it was just an interesting coincidence how I'm sitting here, I I guess it's the caster's curse in the end. I, I sit here just talking about the middle matchup and how Magnus was actually, they're basically even with GPM and even in farm, but just like that all of a sudden we saw what happened and now Tundra has a quite a bit of an advantage now over Magnus to say the least. So it looks like, you know, he thinks he got, got uh, whatever the issue was figured out and going to come back right here, but... Uh, he is going to port it back into the middle lane, continue to farm. So, you know, what's done is done. The best, uh, easy for us to say, I know, but you just got to move on from the situation and uh, keep, uh, keep keep your chin up high. So, yeah. Pebbles is still having a great time here at the bottom lane. Steam Boots and the mana battery he's been sitting on, and his GPM is remaining to be up there, 340 gold per minute currently. But you see Tundra coming in with the Invis. This could get deadly again. Yeah, speaking, I was saying, speaking of moving on, look at how uh, Tundra is moving on towards that Invis room bottom lane where they actually had no vision of him picking it up. So this is going to come as a total shocker to them. Ultimate is almost up on Tundra, up in uh, 14 seconds, and he's content to wait, man. I mean, look at the timer on it. He's got 34 seconds. Magnus has no idea. TP down for Magnus for 20 seconds. This fight ward. is going to be a massacre. Tundra's got to, I mean, Pebbles has got to be careful. I Look at them. They're sitting on the ref ward. They yeah. know something's up, but... Yeah, okay, so they, they did suspect a bit, but he, he, look at how he's playing it. He, he yeah. can see them baiting it out, and this is going to be a... Oh, it's so close. Okay, he's going to go they in right here. Piercing shards. Him, I think by a tail, Jeez. maybe not. Jeez, that was so close. Top in the meantime, Bubbles and Magnus going at it, but in the end, going to be fine. This ward of sight right here from Seal Kid in the lane. I mean, that that gave them a lot of information, too. Oh, did it actually see Tundra? No. It, it didn't see Tundra, but it did see the others, you and know, sort of how aggressive. they were playing. And the fact that yeah. Tundra was missing was like a. Yeah. Was a cute. So a good heads up from Lion Esports Club right there. And uh, definitely saving themselves some lives because <laughs> that was setting up to be a big, big couple of kills, even more for, for complexity. And this game could have started to snowball big time for them if that happened. But with that said, I mean, it still is a lead for complexity. But again, you do have a Pebbles. And despite that complete mishap from Agnes, he is still managing to still be around that 500, or excuse me, 300 gold per minute mark. Just below it, actually. So again, at least good news there. Um, but Pebbles. The obvious focus here for Lion Esports Club. Get in that portal key here in the near future and uh, start making work with that. This is definitely a team, plenty of team five potential. You know, I will say with the Magnus. Alonia situation. Oh, what is he running into? Tundra right here. Tundra does have the Avalanche. There we go. The Avalanche increasing shards on top. Also has a culture. Not a mana, though. Magnus will lob a search away, and he will be fine. Oof. If it wasn't for the lack of mana, he might have been dead right there. And he was trying to do the math even with that culture. I'm not sure quite so much as he... Looks like he might have gotten off with this uh, cold shoulder plus one more auto attack. But either way, Magnus being forced to retreat here, and this is actually kind of good. They're expecting a teleport coming up from Magnus in some area. As soon as they get vision, though, they have this period of vulnerability where his homecoming stone is down. So, uh, if they see him, maybe take back mid and try to pick up some from there. If I was uh, Complexity, I'd be looking for pressure elsewhere. Yeah. Again, I was, I was going to bring up though. You know, when we were talking about Alonia, it's obviously she still will bring a lot to the table in the end, but. 
Being in that trial lane setup, a secondary support, it's not as a powerful as, of course, he was said to be the farm focus. Um, so the level impact not going to be as significant. And uh, that, that, could be, that could be a difference in these team fights as well, where you, you won't have as much damage, per perhaps because of that. So something else to keep in mind here. Uh, but you do have that leveling up Magmus, and Tempest is, seems like he's, uh, he's, well, he's coming along at least. Not, not, not as if he would have been jungling, it would be the same, but... Um, well, you got compared to the uh, Bubbles, and <laughs> Bubbles did win that match of Pan early, to usually try to set up very safe lane. Uh, mid lane being crushed with a total vision of this Magmus, who just done in, not gonna <laughs> try to set anything up in case it was bait, but it wasn't. Lost. Bubbles is capitalized right away. Oh, jeez. Yeah, well, Super KG had no clue right there. What, was Bubbles hidden? I mean, yeah, I don't... It looked like from the hill, maybe he was because it was night. I would... I'm not sure. Just in a very, one of those spots where I, yeah, I, I mean, Magnus clearly had control right there, so I don't think it was a lag issue by any means, but that was just a decision that did not pay off for him in the end, so... Bubbles happen to be nearby. And speaking of Trophim Order on that Bubbles again, he is farming very well. 330 gold per minute. You see, Ghost Marcher is just finished by Pandemonium as well. So looking back at him and how he's had his time at the bottom lane. Again, not, not necessarily the, the best of best, but yeah, at least he is managing to get by. But on top of that, the, the Tundra and Bubbles, a great game, that, the great start that they're having. That's where Complexity is uh, looking pretty strong right now. So, Yeah, pretty difficult for Tempest to push here as well against us. And like Tundra, those axes just do so much damage to those elementals. A uh, bit higher than the normal nuke, and they deal in mixed forms, 180 each way. But holy crap, Ricky. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a level it's 4 Elonia just ran into a 9 Bubbles and a 5 Aluna, so not much uh, not much FedEx for the win was going to be able to do right there. He just simply found himself in, in a death trap, so. Yeah, everyone having those boots there on the uh, Hellborn team, and meanwhile, we look at the Torture and the Elonia, they're both suffering quite a bit. You see Ports in the middle lane right here, they want to protect this tower. Tundra does, does have his avalanche here. Uh, you see Bubbles is going to quickly port out. They do get the tower kill, however. That's a win for Complexity because look at everyone from Lion Esports Club is here. And they were not able to deny the tower, nor getting the hero kills. So definitely a one fight there for Complexity, or lack thereof for that matter. Because uh, in the meantime, especially, you got Pandemonium just having a good time now at the top lane and enhancing his farm that much more. So it, it, it does seem like Complexity is really just building a lot of momentum here. You already see now a 4,500 goal lead and a 3,400 experience lead. So team fight is definitely looking still strong for Lions. And you do got Pebbles, who is farming well, pretty well. 300 gold per minute. As I say that, though, he's going to be gone right here by Bubbles. Kelfo net up for another 14 seconds. That could be the big difference maker. A little power that will connect. Pebbles just out of range, though. Bubbles not going to chase. And Flensmeister will live. But that was a damn close situation there. Yeah, Pandemonium too. I mean, you look at his farm, he's in at 270, so not quite taking off entirely at no points in Flurry. So, not going to see his explosive farm, but that's another here that as the game goes on and on and on, just will do phenomenally here uh, against the Legion side and sort of gives them that hard carry of late game makers that I'm worried about using out of that phase. Ooh, bottom lane, the Tempest ultimate locking up bubbles, a chain reaction on top. Seal Kid getting credit for the kill right there. He'll actually go to the side shop and pick up his boots as a result of that. Gladly doing so. Uh, so a good kill on the Bubbles here at the bottom lane. Elemental Void, of course, was used, but especially on a hero like Bubbles, who's been having a significant game so far, very well worth the use. So uh, they are not going to push the bottom lane, however, realizing with the Elemental Void especially being down, not as big of a threat. So they are going to fall back in the meantime. Or will they? Flensmeister running back in right here. Glacius, so oh, he's invisible right next to him. There's the freeze. Is there going to be follow up? The avalanche is going to come out. The Pierce charge at the top. In comes the cold shoulder. Flashmeister dropping it. Shocks off Tundra. But it doesn't matter. Down falls Pebbles. His support just simply was not there. They were busy doing some stacking of the jungle in the meantime. Flensmeister just got a little cocky there, and it did not pay off. Yeah, so that portal keeping hindered even more. So we already talked about the fact that, you know, even once he gets it, the Tundra is going to be a major thorn on the side. So, mm -hmm. yeah, Complexity doing a great job of scouting down with those gain kinkles. I mean, we have, meanwhile, we see Tundra actually moving. Uh, well, he was moving towards cool. he's moving back up there. He was just the rune for a sec. That portal key on Tundra, kind of, uh, kind of looking at Pebbles a little bit and saying, "Well, I already got my portal key. Where's yours?" 13 and a half minutes in. Again, Pebbles, this is going to definitely be delayed. 
a little bit further. And, and especially in a, tri a short lane tri lane where you're prioritizing farm on pebbles, uh, the fact that he doesn't have one yet is definitely got to be. I mean, he has. He does. He do want to build up for sure. But my point being, you know, you. <laughs> You put a lot of resources into making sure he got an earlier on portal key, very effective early on farm, and it's not as significant as they definitely want it to be. That's a, that's a guarantee there. So um, you do see the shiver yet again, just going to scout out line eSports Club, kind of moving up here in the lane. All five of them are here with that set. You see, they realize the shiver was. They're going to quickly take it out, but, well, the numbers are knowing. All five are here for line eSports Club. How will Complexity respond? It looks like they do want to... Put up some type of defense here. Yeah, but it's just like it's different than when you're trying to push with the keeper and and, and, and uh, Ophelia. It's just the, these minions, man. The bubbles, nuke, the the mix, uh, the piercing shards, mixed damage is tearing them right apart. Yeah. Uh, no astrolabe or even being near in sight yet here on the Legion side either. So it's another thing to take into in mind. Yeah. And complexity just looking really good right now. You know, also IG uh, Internet Gangsters, they're most likely at least a couple of the players, if not even old him, uh, definitely tuning into this game. Hold up to Otto Magnus, gonna be caught on right here. Bubbles and Tundra again, just continuing the movement. The Aluna power throw on top of that. Actually, Riser getting credit for the kill right there with the red power throw and just snipes out Magnus. So, uh, but my point being, you, you bet Internet Gangsters definitely sitting back thinking to kind of scout out both of these opponents, possible opponents. And, of course, they're waiting to play the winner in the following round to then truly see who's going to be going to DreamHack Summer 2013 joining Stay Green out of this event. Right now, Complexity does have a lot building up here in game number one. And, and going back to just in general, the lineup here of Lion Esports Club, it's just uh, <laughs> it's a scary, scary place to be right now. I mean, hell, even at Pandemonium, he's been very quiet this game. Yet he is now at 325 gold per minute. He just cleaned up some Ancients here. He actually now has a Blessed Orb picked up here, so... Something else to keep in mind. Yeah, I mean, the, the blessed orb, it's, uh, well, actually, yeah, I it's need so your also, I mean, that, uh, it just, it, it leads more towards if you're going to late game route. Yeah, sure, there is something like, I, I don't know, like, a shrunken head is great here against this Legion team. It is, it is wonderful, but going for that Nullstone will ensure late game dying. So making that power form, uh, full power form there, and he need, he just needs that farming tool, so not having any other sort of mana boost, this will give him a some sort of flash farm now that he's leveling up his flurry. Yeah, so he's definitely making a case. I mean, again, w when your team is is already doing so successful without you really having right. any type of, type of impact, it, it makes sense what kind of Beacon yeah. is thinking here, I'm sure. Well, yeah, it's like, it's like okay, how are they going to try to force a fight right now? Yeah. Uh, Tempest, we'll see right there. He actually is sitting at 230 gold per minute. I didn't see if he picked up. No, he's picking it. He's trying to build the tablet at this point. So he's not going to have a portal key anytime soon. Pebbles has his portal key, but they have a hawk to scout out the uh, Pebbles ganks. Mm -hmm. And any tower they try to push here, look at bottom tower. It's got a third left. Middle tower has a lot of life left. Top tower has a lot of Any tower they try to push, Bubbles and Tundra are going to say hello. Yeah. yeah. Covered by the Hawk for Pebbles, it makes it almost impossible to initiate for them. I mean, you see Tundra right here. He was using the Shiver eventually uh, wore out there, but uh, yeah, he's sitting just invis, yeah. sitting on top of them with the invis roof. Four players right here. Make that five. Flensmeister are going to be joining the party as well. So this is just really Moomeander getting some information for his team and letting them know uh, where they're at. But uh, we do see a middle push attempt. Still no towers have been killed by Lion Esports Club. They are still looking for the hell. There's only been one tower bait, killed in total man. with the middle tower. They're trying to bait it. They're yeah. getting into position here. Bubbles spamming back the wave still while uh, we see Pandemonium farming. So yeah. uh, it's bait even as they have an amazing counter push. And I was about Bubbles plus Thunder Man. It's even keeping the Lunas there too. I mean, come on, that, that is just an amazing spam. It is. Uh, ooh, I am actually. I got a skip for a bit, and I'm still getting a little bit of skips, but it overall seems. Is that like me, though? Yeah. Well, no, I'm getting the same thing. Okay, so I wonder if that's us, actually. Yeah, it might be a little bit of hiccups in the internet. I mean. Does our stream still look fine? Are we getting. <laughs> Loading video, so meaning. <laughs> that's terrible, yeah. Let me actually. I mean, my ping's fine, so. Yeah, I'll check the ping. It's just a little like skippy, though. Um, okay, I mean, it, it sounds like the stream is actually good still, so hopefully uh, that isn't an issue. And it looks like the players, obviously, uh, I'm sure we would have had to pause by now if they were feeling that, too. So, do apologize. I mean, looking at my ping, again, it's not, it's not showing that I'm getting any uh, spikes right here, so. Uh, we do see at the bottom lane, though, Magnus, in the meantime, he's going to pour it down here. So in the middle lane, obviously, the tower does not end up going down after all that. Uh, it's still well alive here, just below half-life, but 
Uh, plenty, plenty of life still left here on that side. Bottom lane, you see Bubbles actually ended up going in, getting the kill to Magnus. Now he's in retreat mode. Alonia running in. The flash freeze on Iglesias. The glacial spikes coming out as well. Torture chasing. Can he get a range? The agonizing bonds. Chain reactions will connect. And Peter Van Dam will end up falling right there. So a big kill coming out for her. Uh, Lion in the end, well, at least a, a counter kill, you could say. Well, yeah, making, making the best of out of it, obviously. The uh, Glacier is not really <laughs> nearly as valuable as something like this Magmus thing at level 10. Still struggling to pick up something like his portal key to maybe make those initiations a little bit easier on the Hellborn team. Still, there is that, that thorn, the, 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 the Tundra Shiver, that there is no real clear counter to. It. I'm going to go ahead and, well, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm going to reconnect real quickly just okay, to see. Just, I'm getting a similar thing going yeah. on. So. I don't know if it's just the spectators in general or what, but let me just go ahead and reconnect here just to make sure that uh, or at least attempt to try to fix that issue. Let's see here. We might not need to log out altogether. Is it still going? Okay. Well, uh, meanwhile, there is actually, okay, no top tower to the Hellborn Tower. Uh, the Hellborn team, rather, did get the Tier 1 Legion Tower. Uh, it was uh, Bubbles being able to pick it up and slipping on out of there. He does have his portal key, so it aided in his escape. He created a quick invis room. But meanwhile, B-Kid actually winded up picking off FedEx for the win. That Aloni in middle lane by himself using his... Uh, I'm actually checking to see if he had... To, yeah, he did use his face smash for that. So, uh, easy pick off. Now, Bubbles sitting here. Invis gets the kelp field onto Pebbles. Now, he has to be careful here. He's sitting in the fog. They don't want to go. He is going to go way right there. Tundra coming up with the avalanche. Trying to tempt. Same comes the cannonball top of the floor. He's being used. And Tempest will eventually fall. You can tell he might have wanted Elements of Void right there. Might not have mattered in the end, however. Torture also going down and Pemmel's active. It don't matter, though. Complexity, very strong. Obviously, just coming into the, as that mid fight at least was taking place. But again, you see the big picture here. Nearly an 11,000 goal lead, a 9,500 experience lead. Complexity just building up so much right now. Beacon with that no stone on Pandemonium. Amongst everything else that is going on. Another 2,400 gold on Tundra, 1,600 gold on Bubbles. The best thing you got, again, over here for the Sleeves side, you do got the Portal Key on Pebbles, and you got a tablet on Tempest, but it continues to be a case of it's, well, how much is that going to be yeah, in the end? As much now, I mean, they still do something. Yeah, push him and sort of break him up, but given the fact that he is an all-stone, it's going to be harder to break it that way as well. It's going to rely more on their line stun, something like that, Magnus, something like the, uh, the Pebbles of the Tor, the AoE ground stuns to interrupt him. Until he gets a shrunken, in which now that he has an also to max out flurry, it really isn't that far. Triple stacked ancients at this point, they do go down ultra fast. Oh yeah. Yes, yes they will. So, uh, and you see right here, they're just actually stealing the, the Legion jungle creeps in the meantime. Puzzle Block's going to be picked up by Tundra. Uh, an item once again in the latest patch did receive uh, quite a good amount of all around buffs. You do see the middle lane, it is going to be pushed in. Going down in favor of Line Esports Club. Going for a catch right here, Stalagmite's just out of range. On to Aluna. She's just a little bit too fast. Speaking of Aluna, by the way, look at the farm that Ryze has been able to get. He's a secondary of support, but still, I mean, Steam Boots, Astrolabe, and Power Supply, and top of the Mystic Vestments. He's managed very, very well right here. So at least Lions does get that middle tower kill, but uh, I think at this point, they're, they're, they're simply just going to, they're, they're, well, they're banking on getting that Clutch Tempest ultimate, the Magnus Eruption on top. They're banking on that team fight synergy, all coming together. Hoping they have enough damage, and uh, you well, know that's what it's going to be. But I, I mentioned it early on, though, that their team is very magic damage uh, centric, yeah, and th because of that, it's kind of like their their lineup does have a time or two more so. So, uh, yeah, I like the sort of grouping up to try to make something happen. I, I do think they're sort of walking into the heart of the enemy team here, and we look right there. Pandemonium trying to set up a little bit uh, behind him is actually, you know, he's in, in this, but. The shiver. He wants to go so bad. Thunder jumping in right there on a damage in the meantime. Magma's gonna kind of send eruption being channeled. The glacial spikes being eruption's gonna do a lot of damage right here. Thunder gets a charge off. So in the meantime, glacial down pour off to the side. The face match on the pebbles and pebbles will go down. Tempest falling shortly after did not get the elemental void off. Magnus completely stuns nowhere. Tundra's on the run. The piercing shards to finish off torture. And Magnus says Sayonara. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. GG Well Blades are gonna be called here. There's the conceit foe. Complexity gaming. We'll take game number one over Lion Esports Club. It just simply was too much. Lion Esports Club, they tried to hang in there as long as they could. Again, hopefully they could get that clutch a uh, couple of ultimates off and maybe stay along and stay alive in the game at the very least. But it just wasn't to be. I mean, you do. Uh, let's be honest. You do look at that game. You, you you think about the Magnus point where he did go in. He got the DC issue. 
I'm not going to sit here and say that that because of that, that's why they lost by any means. But you can kind of tell. Momentum did start to fall from there on the side of Lions. Well, that's complexity it wasn't so just early. that, too. Lions was looking very strong early on. I think one of the major points was when the, the haste rune actually spawned for that Tundra True. bottom lane. Yeah, he got, he got to pick up two kills, hit level six from it, go back to that middle lane. Yeah. Already had uh, forced Magmus back to the lane. That's when Magmus came back after being forced back to his base. Yeah. And at that point, he was like... Uh oh! And <laughs> the, the the death happened. Had a TV back. His growth was completely stunted for the rest of the game. Sorry, there he ended at 241 gold per minute compared to Tundra's uh, 379. Uh, T Tempest was never even able to get into a posi good positioning to get a good elemental void off against yeah. that team, and that was part of going back to it. They have that Tundra. They have that scouting mechanism. So they did lock it. We did to finally see them pick it, even though they ignored it in the previous series mm. against uh, who are they playing? IG. I I I G. Yeah, it was ignored in those games. Yeah. So. Game number one, Complexity Gaming, uh, picking a pretty decisive game number one there over Lion Esports Club. Again, the winner of this is going to be set up to play Internet Gangsters later on today to see who is going to be going to DreamHack Summer 2013. Complexity right now has that one nothing advantage here in this best of the three series. Lion Esports Club fighting for their lives right now. I guarantee they 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 really want to go to Dream Mac as every other team, of course. For sure. So uh, going to be fighting strong, I'm sure. So, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We do have game number two just around the corner, corner going to be coming up shortly here.